So today we're going to talk about the non-acceptable and acceptable liquids during intermittent fasting, a very important topic because so many people make mistakes when they're doing fasting. And it's a lot better just to learn from the experience of other people's mistakes because the amount of time it would take for you to try to figure all this out, it would be months or years. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it based on a lot of experience working with other people and even on myself. Now, a true fast is really not eating anything except drinking water, okay? That's a true fast. Now, the problem with that is the majority of the population is, has a lot less stored nutrients than we had even 20 years ago. So you're gonna experience all sorts of side effects and problems if you don't like enhance your fasting with certain nutrients. And there are a lot of things that you may drink that can really nullify your results with fasting. But I wanna emphasize something. When we talk about bumping yourself out of a fast or bumping yourself out of ketosis or autophagy, which is a condition where you're recycling your old proteins and you're making new proteins, there's gonna be a lot of confusions. Number one, the benefits of fasting can get nullified with anything that spikes insulin. So the whole goal of doing fasting is to lower your insulin as, as low as possible. But there's two things I want to bring up. Number one, when you consume pure fat, okay, you don't trigger insulin. When you consume fiber, which is a carbohydrate, you're not going to trigger insulin your body is going to go after that fat as its primary calories before it taps into your own body fat. So even though you're in ketosis, the ketones are coming from the dietary fat, not your own fat. And this is why you may not be losing weight if you consume like a pure fat during a fast. It's not gonna increase insulin. It's not gonna bump you out of ketosis, but it's just going to stop your weight loss. So I created this list and we're just going to go through it. All right. Number one, water. Is that acceptable? Uh, that, that would be a yes. Now, of course, there's good water and there's bad water. Uh, tap water is just filled with chemicals. So if you need to get a filter, get one and start using it because there are plastics, there are chemicals, there are hormones in the water supply, not to mention the toxic chemicals that they use to kill off um, germs and things in the city water. So just get a filter. Even if it's a Brita filter, it's better than nothing. Personally, I have a filter that pulls out fluoride because if you're drinking fluoride, it's going to affect your thyroid. And also in the shower, all that fluoride just makes your skin. I mean, it can create all sorts of like red rashes and all sorts of issues. And you can simply just put a little attachment to your shower head and uh, get rid of that fluoride. I'll put a link down below of a, a good shower head that filters out the fluoride. So spring water is the best. You can do bottled water. Pellegrino is a bit expensive, but it has all the minerals and it's naturally carbonated. Personally, I like carbonated water for some reason. It just is, I just like it. So I have a little machine that pumps in CO2 into water and it makes my own carbonated uh, water. Uh, but in general, water is not going to bump you out of ketosis. But I would recommend drinking a little bit more water when you're doing intermittent fasting. If you have a tendency to get a kidney stone, you want to be consuming at least 2.5 liters of fluid every single day, and that will really protect you. All right. Now, what about when we add apple cider vinegar? That's a definite yes, because apple cider vinegar will greatly help your blood sugars. It's an acid, so it's going to help your digestion. So you're going to just digest better. And even though if you drink it when you're not eating, it's still going to help your digestion. And I'm talking about the microbiome in your intestine. So it'll help that. It'll also help you absorb minerals. But the main thing it will do for you is help your blood sugars and it'll help give you energy as well. So I highly recommend doing like a tablespoon in your water a few times a day. It doesn't actually matter when you take it. Um, but just try it and see if you like it. And some people use a straw so it doesn't affect your enamel. Uh, that would be a good idea. All right, what about lemon juice in your water? Absolutely yes, because lemon juice uh, has citrates and citrates help to inhibit oxalates. So it decreases the risk of getting a kidney stone. And the lemon juice does have vitamin C, but only if it's a fresh lemon. If it's in a lemon concentrate, it's pasteurized. It's not going to have 
pretty much any vitamin C at all. So the goal is not to drink it for vitamin C. The goal is to drink it to help prevent kidney stones by inhibiting oxalates. And it's also good for other things too. It helps the liver, it helps the gallbladder, and it also has certain phytonutrients that help in other ways. All right, what about diet sodas? That would be a big fat no, uh, because the artificial sweeteners, especially like aspartame, affects your microbiome, and that can indirectly affect your insulin levels and create insulin resistance. And that can actually cause you to put on weight. Now, if you're using diet sodas with stevia, that's a whole different story. Totally fine. Monk fruit is another good sweetener, as well as erythritol. All right, then we get to coffee. If you're just doing black coffee, it's not going to hurt you at all. So that would be a yes on the list. Um, the only point I'm going to bring up is caffeine. If you're drinking a lot of coffee through the day, you're, you're going to be consuming a lot of caffeine and that can inhibit your sleep cycles, which will then increase cortisol and that will slow down your weight loss. So I would recommend only doing one cup in the morning if possible. That's what I do. And my cup is actually pretty small. Of course, the coffee is strong, but it's a very small cup. I would definitely spend a little, little bit more money and get organic because out of all the things that are sprayed with pesticides, coffee beans are at the top of the list. All right, then we get into this bulletproof thing. What is this bulletproof coffee? Well, they're adding butter or MCT oil to the coffee. And this brings up the point, which I talked about in the beginning, where it's not going to bump you out of ketosis it's going to bump you out of losing weight if you have a slow metabolism. But I do recommend Bulletproof Coffee in the very beginning while you start this program because it's going to allow you to do longer fasting. And it has other benefits for your cognitive ability because MCT oil and even butter will help you generate ketones for your brain. And it's going to help you with memory and focus and concentration. But as you get going and you're really starting to lose weight, and let's say, for example, you have a slow metabolism and things aren't happening, that would be one thing to go. Because I just recently had someone that was trying to lose weight and I, they were doing one meal a day, but I noticed that they were doing uh, this Bulletproof coffee. So we recommended getting rid of the fat in the coffee and just do coffee, maybe just with a little bit of half and half or cream and boom, they started losing weight. So it is a point to put attention on if you're struggling with weight loss. Now, if you're thin and you want some extra benefits with your cognitive function, definitely do Bulletproof Coffee. All right, now what about half and half versus cream? Now, half and half is half milk and half cream. And then you have whole cream or whipping cream. Now, half and half has maybe 1.6 grams of carbs, okay? So I mean, it's pretty small, but it has some in two tablespoons, whereas whole cream has zero carbs. So I would always recommend doing the whole cream in your coffee versus the half and half, but it's a real minor point. So I'm going to put it under the maybe category. But that being said, we're talking about such small amounts and I rotate. Sometimes I use half and half. Sometimes I use whole cream. All right. Then we get to bone broth. Bone broth does have protein in it. It has like five grams per cup. And that is something you don't want to add when you're fasting. So bone broth is under the no category. It's not a good idea. So it's definitely going to inhibit your results with fasting. And I just want to back up for a second because I forgot to talk about non-dairy creamers. Wow. Those things are filled with chemicals. I would avoid those at all costs. All right. The next one is tea. Now, green tea is very good to consume when you're doing fasting. There are certain phytonutrients in tea, even if you heat the tea, that will help your metabolism, that will speed things up, that have antioxidant properties, that have other phytonutrients that fight cancer, that have phytonutrients that support blood sugars, and the list goes on and on and on. I highly recommend consuming some type of herbal tea Green tea is one of them. There's many others on a keto plan. But just one point about that is that these teas sometimes have caffeine. So take that in consideration because that can start affecting your sleep, especially if you're sensitive. All right, next thing is coconut water. Well, coconut water has between 11 grams to I think 16 grams 
of sugar. So you definitely want to avoid coconut water. Some people drink it for hydration, thinking it's a great electrolyte drink, but it comes with a package. It comes with a lot of sugar. And um, anytime you eat sugar or when you're fasting, you nullify your results for a good amount of time. Now, coconut milk also has uh, some carbs, but it really depends on the type of coconut milk. Uh, the coconut milk from brand name Silk, that actually has one gram of carbs, so that may be okay. So coconut water is a no. Coconut milk could be a maybe. All right, next one. Pre-workout powders that you would put in your drink, like Brands Chain Amino Acids. Not good at all. We're talking about a protein. And this protein is not a complete protein. It's just amino acids. And you don't want to do that when you're fasting, okay? I don't recommend branch chain amino acids. That will definitely bump you out of ketosis. It'll bump you out of fat burning. And it'll definitely bump you out of autophagy. And so even when you're working out, by consuming these amino acids or any type of pre-workout drink, either before or after your workout, is not a good thing unless it's just plain electrolytes with no sugar. Now, if you combine this low carb diet with fasting and exercise, you're gonna take your ketones to a whole new level. You'll definitely get in much deeper ketosis and that would be a great goal. Now, what about alcohol, okay? You've probably heard of types of alcohol that are uh, so-called keto friendly. They have no carbs in them. Here's the problem. It's true that there's certain alcohol unlike like margaritas or a beer that have carbs or sugar that doesn't have any added sugar, but the alcohol itself really um, toxifies your liver, which is going to affect your fasting results and your ability to lose weight and your autophagy. It's not a good idea in any amounts. I'm sorry. Now, what about actual milk? Is that keto friendly? That would be a big fat no, because milk, one cup, has like 12 grams of carbs and zero fiber, which means we're talking about net carbs, which is way too high. But the fat from the milk in the form of butter, as well as the half and half and cream is a lot better. All right, what about electrolytes? Well, absolutely yes, if it doesn't have any added sugar. If it's sweetened with stevia or monk fruit, totally fine. But realize that sometimes stevia comes with maltodextrin. So you wanna make sure it doesn't have maltodextrin or some other type of synthetic sugar. But electrolytes are essential when you're doing fasting. So is other nutrients like B vitamins and vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids, because the last thing you want to have happen is run out of these nutrients when you're fasting and get dizzy or faint or feel weak. So the best video that you wanna watch on that is right here on what supplements to take while you're fasting.